Hello and welcome back to another live session with Nana Aibi Afrojana, a mystic and a life coach. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm doing good. Yourself? I'm doing good. Also. It's been a while. Yes, yeah, sir. Where yeah. have you been? Um, been traveling here and there. Yeah, recently I went to my village. I say my village. And people say, no, say your town. But town, village, the same thing to me. Two months here. I was there uh, previously at three weeks. Okay. Yeah, we went to have a lot of development there. And within that shop, possible time, trust me, if you go there now, you'll be surprised. We've been able to change many things. So, yeah, I was there all this while. I just came back to Accra some few days back. You've been trying? Yeah. It makes me happy, you know? Yeah. I was actually born to serve, so service makes me happy. I remember the last day of the whole program, we did... Um, general cleaning of the whole town. So everybody was having the broom, whatever it is. So I was having my own long broom. And as I used to do in the temple, I sleep in the temple, I sleep daily. Okay. So when I started, everybody said, hey, daddy, and I'll give you, and I said, no, what is it? No, wait, the work is huge. If you want to do something, go and find some broom, go and do your own. <laughs> Allow me. Okay. So we started around six, six, seven. And throughout the whole program, I was sweeping. So everybody was shocked. I said, well, why? I mean, just the name Nana and Jana, what is so different? Maybe I mean, we are not familiar with seven because many people, when they come into power, they say Probably that's what people think. But when it comes to Krishna consciousness, we serve. We don't engage juniors to serve. The seniors serve as a sign of example to the juniors. Okay. So... When you come to the temple, I sweep. In the morning after our normal morning worship, we call something karma yoga. Physical service towards God. Karma means action. You know, the karma, action and reaction. Yeah. So karma yoga means action in the service of God. Okay. So not just sitting on the asana and preaching about God, but it gets to a point you must do something with your hands. So during karma yoga, all the leaders in the temple, some take a broom to go and sleep, some go to the kitchen, some fetch water. Everybody is doing something with their hands. No, that's karma yoga. So sweeping has been something that I've been doing all this while cleaning, cooking. I've been doing all this in the temple. So throughout the whole day, we were all engaged, sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. And we were sweeping dust, actually. We were not just sweeping rubbish alone, dust, because we did a whole lot of construction job both left and right, we did all the pavement with concrete. So we were sweeping all the dust from the road, right from the top to the down. Then we came all the way to the left side. Everything was clean. So wow. I did so much. And to me, that was normal. Normal to my life routine. But I think people there were thinking, you know, it was surprising because I have an executive member of this Nkoso fan club. So they are the leaders. So they were standing there guiding people. And they saw me with the broom and they were sweeping. So they're coming to me, no, 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 no. I said, no. The work today is huge. Okay. So if you want to take my broom, you want to sweep, go and find your own broom and go and sweep. Allow me to sweep. So did they join you? <laughs> so everybody joined. <laughs> because I mean, the, the person you, are, you think that he's supposed to be a leader, he is sweeping. Yeah. So what will you do? You'll be forced to sweep. Yes. And I think I got to a point, my uncle was telling me, nah, why you be here? Yes. He said, why you can come here? He said, no, no, no. I am not doing because I want people to see. This is what I do. We are doing cleaning. Everybody must get involved. And I'm doing to the end of this program. I'm not saying, okay, I've done some comments. No. For the cameras. No, no, no. I, mean, I was just sweeping. I was just doing it right from the beginning to the end. And even there are places they told me that they have cleaned already. To me, I thought, okay, let me just go and inspect. When I went there, I saw they were doing last. I said, no, this is no proper clean. I started sweeping and they came following me. So we did a lot. So after the whole thing, I was very tired. And trust me, I was just happy. After the whole exercise, someone took a video. I didn't know. Okay. So the person uh, sent a video on the transform. I mean, on the Nkoso fan club page. I was like, "What? About three hundred people? You couldn't even get space to walk through?" Yeah, and people were just following me. I said, "What?" So this thing happened. So I was very pleased that a lot of people came. So I would say, I'm so grateful to the Dumasuya chiefs, because they give us their full support. And then the citizens of Dumasuya, they did so well. 
the passion was so much. Everybody was, I saw some old people, women and men alike, and everybody was so involved. I was like, wow. So this is possible. We are doing it. So um, Dumasia this time around was hectic. But trust me, I was so happy. I was smiling all through her because I could see that, yes, we have the human resource and people are ready to support. So Dumasia is on the way of development. And gradually, we get to a point that people will appreciate it. <laughs> we thank you very much. God bless. <laughs> Before we move straight to our topic, um, we've been engaging our members on YouTube. Some have been sending their questions, and this is a new segment. So if you are watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ask your random questions, and we'll be asking Nana for you. And one member asked, and Ethiopians aren't using the world calendar as we know. Mm -hmm. They use different calendar. So the member is asking, does the world um, predictions affect Ethiopia? We dig out some facts about um, some of the Ethiopian calendar, so mm -hmm. I can read to you. Sure. Okay. So the Ethiopian calendar is based on the ancient Coptic calendar, which was introduced by Egyptian astronomers around 25 BC. It is a solar calendar that consists of 12 months of 30 days each, with an additional 13 months of 5 or 6, depending on whether it is a leap year. The Ethiopian calendar is approximately seven years and eight months behind the Gregorian calendar. This is the calendar outside what we all know. Sure. Yes. Um, it is believed to have been influenced by the um, Egyptian calendar and was adopted by Ethiopia during the reign of Emperor Augustus. Augustus yeah. In the first century BC, the calendar holds great sig significance in Ethiopian culture and is used to determine important religious and cultural events. Okay. Okay, the first thing is that uh, we don't have only one calendar. Okay. We have many calendars, you know. The most ancient of all calendars is the Vedic calendar. You just mentioned of the Egyptian calendar, which is very old also, but you'll be able to identify which year was this enacted. But when it comes to the Vedas, there is no history to it. Modern history would say 5,000 years ago. Okay. That's when the Vedic calendar started. But the truth of the matter is that before the time that has been stipulated to be the beginning of the Vedic information, it is just in the middle of it. Before that time, the Vedic knowledge was still in existence. So this is the whole idea. When any manufacturer came out with a product, like say this iPhone, he does so with a manual to guide you how to manipulate through the device. So you know, if you buy any new product and you find it difficult how to work with it, you want to look for the manual. Yes. Yeah, the manual, even cars, new cars have these things. You have to go through it and say, okay, I'm supposed to do A, B, C, D to start the engine and all that. So this material universe, not our world though, the material universe, which consists of thousands and thousands of universes, and each universe consisting of thousands and thousands of planets. So you can just imagine, there's no way science will be able to calculate how many planets we do have. So uncountable planets altogether is considered to be the material universe. The material universe was created by the most high, like a device. And there are manuals. There is a manual to guide us how to do things within the material universe. Okay. So that manual, the name is called knowledge. Okay. But in Sanskrit, it means Vedas. So Vedas literally means knowledge. Oh, okay. So the knowledge to guide us through this material universe is what is we call the Vedas or the scriptural information for us to govern this material universe. So the Vedic calendar has been in existence since time in Maria, right from the day the material universe was created. You cannot put a date on it. Uh, you cannot, and even this material universe, the day it was created, nobody is able to put a date to it. Because we have stories that predate about 10 million years within this, our current universe. 10 mil we have stories that talks about things that happened 10 million years ago. Within this, our current universe. Don't forget, after creation goes through three processes. 
Okay. It goes through creation, it goes through maintenance, and it goes through destruction. Okay. So there has been many, 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 many creations, many, many maintenance, many, many destructions. Okay. But our current universe, there are stories that predate 10 million years ago. Okay? So the Veda has been in existence all these years. So the Vedic calendar is somehow or the other different from the Gregorian calendar and different from the Arabic calendar and different from many other Coptic or whatever calendar we have. Okay. But one amazing thing is the engineers of these calendars are not mere people. They are not mere ordinary men. They are seers. They are psychic men. People that have the ability to look into the future. So for instance, the Gregorian calendar is different from the Vedic calendar. But the Constantine and his own chief men, people that came out to create all day, Sunday, Monday up to Saturday, month, January to February up to December, they were mystic people. Okay. So even though there has been a reorganization of the whole calendar, but the ultimate essence is not missing. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. For instance, in the Gregorian calendar, we start from January to December, but from the Vedic calendar, it is not from January. Where does it it's come? between June, I mean, from April and May. Okay. Not necessarily from 1st June, but in between that area. The Islamic calendar is a little bit different. The Chinese calendar is a little bit different. But the engineers of this reintroduction of new calendars, they were all mystic people, not ordinary men. So they are able to understand the spiritual intricacies of all this information. They will bring it and give a different name. So the date might not be the same, but the essence of it becomes the same. Okay. For instance, at times, you'll be surprised that maybe the calendar of 1983 corresponds to the calendar of, say, 2022. That daily, like the date and the month, everything is the same. Why? Because they want to tell you that the occurrences of that year will exactly be what we were experiencing in the subsequent year or the same year that matches up with all the days, the time, and whatever happens in that calendar. Even though, say, for instance, 1983 is so many years ago, but you will check and say maybe 2021 matches 1983. What it means is that the Sunday in 1983, the same Sunday will appear in 2021. Okay. In which month, in which week, exactly matches everything. So what to tell you is that all the if events and all the things based on the constellation of the stars will be equal to whatever happens in 1983. The same thing as compared to, me say, 2021. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is that the creators of all these calendars, whether it be the new one or the old one, they were mystics, they were seers. So even though they might give a different name and even with a different date, the same example I gave you in 1983 probably is having the same details in 2021. Why? Two different years. But why are they giving information that will correspond to each other? Because they know that the occurrence based on the constellation of the stars in that year will replicate itself in this very year. Wow. So, yes. So, as those are watching us, some of them might be able to even tell us that, okay, this year's calendar and that year's calendar was the same. Because I do remember some time ago, I went to Kofi TV, and someone asked me that question. So, quickly, I went through, and I noticed about three different kind of dates apart, but they were corresponding with the same information. So, I know those are watching us, they might even be able to tell us, okay, this year's calendar and that year's calendar was exactly the same. I think it occurred last year or last two years. Every year, the year matches a, a previous year. Okay. So even in 2023, I might not be able to tell you when, but if you go through it, you might be able to see that, okay, 2023 matches a year so many years ago. The same date, the same weeks, the same month, and the same everything. Okay. okay? So the whole point is that these engineers of new calendars, they are seers, they are mystics, so they are able to get the information of the cancellation. The name might be different. So for instance, the Egyptian calendar or maybe the Ethiopian calendar goes, say, seven, seven years, eight months, you know, before ours. But 2023, we give a lot of predictions. And all the things that happen unfold. Yesterday, someone spoke with me and said, Daddy, we are in Europe. They came to me yesterday, actually, I worked yesterday, they came from Sweden. I said, Daddy, we came to Ghana October. We have been in Sweden for many years. 
But the kind of snow we are experiencing in October, we have never, ever experienced for the past 20 years we have been in Sweden. That it is serious. What is happening there? And right from the beginning of the year, I said it. You go to Ethiopia and see all the things that I spoke of that has been happening in other places now. The same thing will be happening there. So yes, the calendar might be different. But based on the constellation of the stars, the information will be the same. So you are all under one umbrella. So you might choose to say, okay, this year is maybe 2020. Yeah. Or maybe the year is 2005. But the stars, the elements that are manipulating the system, they are still there. Mm -hmm. So the same formation, if, if K2 is in operation, there will be terrible weather conditions. And K2 is operating this year. So you can choose to call, okay, this year is maybe 2000. But K2 is operating, you will never push K2 aside. And if K2 is in operation, he misbehaves. Okay. All the things that happen, happen. So the calendar might be different, but the information will be the same because these new engineers of these calendars, they are psychic, they are seers, so they will look for the information. And then they might give some name, okay, this year is whatever year, but it's the same thing. It yeah. doesn't change anything. Okay. Unless you go to Ethiopia and all the things that what is experiencing. Ethiopia is not experiencing the same thing. There are things, I mean, every day I'm online, I'm checking news. And every time they will tell you for about 40 years, about 20 years, they are experiencing this for the first time. There are many, many news like that. And we said this right from the beginning of the year. That this year, when it comes to the weather, we come to finances, we come to health, Everything this year is going to be special in a very bad way. And if you go to Ethiopia, you go to China, you go to Egypt, everywhere they are experiencing the same thing. So what it means is that they might have different calendars with different naming, but the consequence or the essence of the troubles and the good things that we go through, everybody is going to experience it. Thank you very much. No one is uh, excluded. Yeah. Um, the member that asked this question, I hope you are satisfied. If you have more questions, please um, comment under this video and we will be asking you in our pre um, next videos. Um, the, today's topic, we want to actually delve into the spiritual life of Nana Ayibia Fujana. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to talk today? Plenty then. <laughs> I see. Yes. The, um, the mistake we see now wasn't the mistake we all... Um, how do you call it? We all knew five years ago or 10 years ago. There's obviously a story behind it. So we want you to share with us and encourage people, people who are embarking on this journey, they can learn from your mistakes and your achievements. Okay. So Thank you. I, I never thought a day like this would come for me to see myself and specifically narrate about my life in regards to how I started this it was a new life of mine, especially somebody who wants to evolve, somebody who wants to anticipate his soul and all that. I would say that um, I've been telling people, whatever happens in life, somehow or the other, has been created from our previous life. 70% of the things that happens to us is based on our karma, and the 30% is our own free will. So probably I would say, from my previous life, maybe there's some connection like that. Because my father was a magician. Okay. I didn't meet him performing magic. When I was born, he was no more a magician. But people that saw him will tell you that he was a very powerful person. My mom tells me what my father used to do. My mom told me a story, a funny one, that a friend of my father those days had an issue. Something that had to do with documents or something. So the person went to the police station and it was like, I'm forgery something. So according to my mom, my father was invited. He went to the police station to see the friend. So when he went there, they were having discussion with the police and my father took the document. And the man said, because of ABC, that's why we want to charge him. My father said, no, but according to what I'm seeing, it is not different from the reality. I mean, everything seems to be genuine now. The policeman said, no, no, I was having this. And so take it and see. So the policeman took it and then the document is changed to something <laughs> that is original. Instantly. So the man was like, ah, but why did you change this? I said, no, but I just took it from my hand. This is exactly what. So maybe you guys didn't read it properly. So the man was, so he looked at my father. My mom told me this, not my father. So the man was just looking at my father. For a very long time, I said, ah, I was having this document and this thing was fake. So no, so no, maybe you didn't look properly. <laughs> and there are many things like that. So he was that person. He was powerful according to those that saw him. Probably, maybe that time if I was born, I would have something else. 
Mm -hmm. I didn't meet him when he was a magician. There are many, many things people will speak of about him. So maybe I would say, maybe in my previous life, because I have some inclination towards mysticism, okay. that's why I have to come through. But later he stopped. He's not so much. He doesn't have money. My father is not wealthy. Fortunately, he built his own house, but after many years before I was born, later the house had probably go broke down, but we've been able to build a new one for him. What I mean is that he doesn't have money. Yeah. So from there, I remember very well that my father was a very religious man. Okay. And my mom. And I've been saying this, that when the Seventh Day Adventist Church SD came to our village, our town, Dumas, where I'm in, because we're here now. We used to worship in my father's living room. I remember my father had a house that was four bedrooms. So one is chamber and hall, and the chamber and the hall, it was big. So that's where we used to have our church service every Saturday. I remember that very well. And then we used to sleep. My father and my mom sleep in the, the chamber, and then we, live in, we used to sleep in the hall, and our seniors sleep in the other rooms. That's what we have in our church all the time. So that should tell you my father was very religious, my mom too, and all of us. So all my siblings, we are all HD right from childhood, and we go through all that bus, HD people. Huh. So I used to read the Bible a lot. And you know, the Sabbatarians have this belief that if you don't worship on Saturday, it means that you're not going to God. Especially if you worship on Sunday, it's considered to be an antichrist and that kind of thing. They have that kind of philosophy propound all the time. So I was very strong with that. I attended the Roman Catholic school in Dumensia. Okay. So I had the Bible. So during the break time, I'll call them. They just come and have this discussion on the Bible. We want to prove to them that Roman Catholic is from <laughs> evil and that kind of thing. They are not going to God because they watch on Sundays. And there were many quotations. See, SDA, they learn. They really study the Bible, so they know what they're talking about. So I was that kind of serious with religion. I remember my mom, on Saturday in our house, we don't light any fire in our house. Why? Because Sabbath, you are not supposed to work. Wow. So my mom cooks everything on Friday. By 6 p.m., she's done with the, maybe the banku or with the kukunte, whatever it is. And she have a way of keeping it. The following morning, the soup will still be hot. That's what we eat. So in our house, as it is, you don't see any fire. My mom used to sell. And if somebody's owing her, you come to pay on Saturday, she will tell you, take the money and come back. After some... <laughs> She was that serious. I want to get, she was that serious. Okay. So, like that. And I remember when I was in class six, Hare Krishna people came to our town, and I remember this very well. As I'm speaking, I can even see that scene. I was with my father, class six. Okay. He was holding my hand. And after their normal preaching, my father asked questions. I can see, standing there with my father, he was asking questions. And he was kind of convinced. So after that, he bought some things, some oil, some soup, and some things, and incense, and books from my father, from the Hare Krishna people. Okay. I was in classics. I didn't know what it meant, so I didn't use anything. So when we completed SS, one of my friends had to reset for mass. So he didn't, he didn't pass. So I remember I went through my father's books, after senior school, I, we were told my father was a magician. And that time, you know, students, we were looking yeah. for powers, things <laughs> like that. So I started going through my father's boxes, like maybe if I can see some juju something or some magic something. So one day when I was going through, I saw a book called Raja Vidya, The King of Knowledge. So I didn't think it was important. I left it. So later on, when my friend had to research for his math, I remember that, oh, I saw a book in my father's book, box. The name was King of Knowledge, Raja Vidya. So probably he might have something to link with mysticism, something that can help my friend to pass his math. So I went there, I took the book, and I gave it to my friend. I see, I saw this book in my father's box. I think it will help you to pass your mathematics. So he took it, and truly he wrote, and he, he passed well. Still, my mind was not into any mysticism. I remember when we were kids, we used to do some herba herba things, a lot of stupid, childish stuff that we do. Okay, if you're looking for this woman, you do A, B, C, D, that kind of nonsense. Tell, tell us a <laughs> brief story about this. No, no, I love, see, I have, I have a lot. I remember there was this kind of uh, rumors, I don't know, or something that says mm -hmm. that if you're looking for a girl and if the girl passed what are you need, there's some question when you go and put it in there, the lady will be following you. 
I remember this very well. One day we were just in JSS. And they were this lizard, you know? Yeah. So you go and kill the lizard, and they cut the head, and you go and grind with some things. That kind of stupid thing. And we were doing, many of us, I mean, all the boys in the village would be doing. Did it work? Well, I say it work. I remember one day, somebody, using myself, I forgot, and somebody tried, and after some time, the lady was kind of close. They say, yeah, they think it's working. <laughs> See, that kind of funny childish life. But, I mean, that was the idea. Everybody yeah. in the town, people were a little bit intrigued with spirituality and mysticism, but we didn't really have any real understanding. But I remember that because I was, my, my, my foundation was kind of religious, kind of like Christian religion belief, like strong faith. So any other thing that had to do with mysticism, I think I was a little bit interested, but I never thought that one day I'll get more involved like where I'm doing today. Until when, um, yeah, I remember one other story before I will tell you how, how I became a Krishna member. Okay. There was a guy in our village, our town. Uh, what's the name? I hope I'll be able to remember the name. He's a tailor now. He's still there. Okay. Because when I went there recently, I was with him. Yeah, Isaac. So he was in Dumasia, and he left Dumasia to go and stay in Odomasi. So Dumasia and Odomasi, they look the same, but different. Okay. Dumasia and Odomasi. Okay. Okay, so even Dumasia, I learned that Dumasia is under the Odomasi kind of. So he went to live there for some time. So when he came back, he was my friend then. So when he returned back, we were still friends. But he was quiet, changed, and he was doing things. That was weird. Like, it's quiet. You don't talk to people. He's always reciting some prayer and that kind of thing. But he looks, like, different as compared to how he was before. But he was my friend then. I remember he was a senior to me. But when I was in school, I was very smart. So he liked me. So I used to move out with him here and there. So this time around, he told me that, okay, he's going to the house. I should go with him. I've ever said this story before. I was a Baba when I was in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we, we, weekends, I used to Baba people to get some money to facilitate our education like that. So I, I think I finished shaving somebody and he said, young Kofi and Koshade, let's go and do something. So I followed him. So when we were going, he was picking flowers on the way. And we knew that people that deal with flowers are you do people, <laughs> people that call saint, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I was like, this guy that I'm following him with flowers, is he <laughs> going to, to kill you. <laughs> sacrifice me or something? <laughs> so I said, okay, then I removed my scissors and I hid it here. <laughs> That when he tried it, and truly, after packing all the flowers, we went to his house, okay. his room. And I, before we entered the room, I could smell a very nice, beautiful scent. So I was afraid. Hey, this guy, oh, he has, you know, he left the Messiah for some time. Now he's been here less than a week, and this guy is doing this weird things. Maybe he has gone for some juju, and he wants to come and use him to sacrifice <laughs> me for some God. So we entered. And when we entered, there was a red light in the room. And there was a curtain. Some, I remember on the wall, some curtains like that. So he removed the curtains, and I could see some weird forms, pictures. Things to me that was very scary. Okay. Horrible stuff, like things that according to a Christian, you see those things, the <laughs> demons, that kind of thing. So he sat down, cross-legged, and he took a bell, started ringing, and he was doing, waving the incense, waving the incense, like that, waving the incense. So I removed my scissors <laughs> and I held it very tight. At this. Now that time, also, I think I was doing martial art. Mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah, maybe. I think I was into martial art. So I held the, the, the scissors. That if a guy try anything, <laughs> either I die or he dies. <laughs> so he offered the incense like that, ringing the bell. After he took some flowers, the flowers that he was picking, he offered all the flowers like that, offered them. So he sat down and he said, this man said, oh, something like that. I remember he was doing something like that. So when he finished, now he turned back and looked at me. He said, now I'm a Hare Krishna person and this is what I'm doing. It's a beautiful thing. I like you, so I want you to introduce you. So in the room, I was shaking. So I didn't say anything, whether I was interested or not. So after some time, he gave me some of the flowers that he offered. After he flicked the flowers in front of the pictures, he took some, he smelled it and said, I should take it. It's a very good thing for me. I took the flower, I remember this very well. But I wanted her to go out quickly because I was so not very yeah. happy in the room because I was thinking probably you want to use this strategy before I realized no, it hits my head or something. <laughs> so I wanted her to quickly leave the room. So after some time, he left. And he said, don't go and be telling people about this. I like it. that's why I want to introduce you to this. Jesus, 
Don't forget I had the same experience with my father when I was in class six. Mm. And in the Bhagavad Gita, he says something that anyone that hears the word Hare Krishna, a seed of devotion is sowed in your heart and one day you become a devotee. Wow. So what happened is we went out and now I was like happy with it because he started telling me a lot of things about it. And truly, this guy was in this our town. Now he's a change. If we look at him, you see this, he possesses some kind of energy. And fortunately, he didn't tell anybody, he told only me. So we used to work around at times, he would pick the flowers, I'll follow him, he go and do this. And now I was, I was no more afraid because I noticed there was nothing like anything like sacrifice, he was going to kill him or something. Mm. So I think some two, three times I went with him, picking the flowers, went to go and do the worship like that. So something happened, and I think when I started SS, I think whether he was no more in the town or something, but there was not no connection between me and him going to his place. So we completed SS, and after some time, I had to come to Accra. So when I was coming to Accra, I saw the Hare Krishna sign board at the junction. For the third time. For the third time, sign some junction with the pictures and Hare Krishna temple. Made the, so I told the driver that I want to alight. So I alighted and I followed the sign board all the way. So when I go to the temple, I remember there was somebody fetching water, fetching water from a well in front of the temple. The well is still there. And he was having this hair, a top of hair here, long. And he was wearing some dress, that kind of dress is, um, it's a dress that probably I've never seen before. Only when I was a kid. But it never occurred to me that it's the same kind of dress that these people were wearing when I met them with my father. So I told him that uh, I, want to, I want to come and worship with them. So when he spoke, I noticed he wasn't a Ghanaian. He was a Nigerian or Syrian or something. He wasn't Ghanaian. So it's okay. Then he had to, he directed me because he was watching the water. It's okay. Pass through here. The first, second room. Somebody is there in the office. You can go and talk to the person. So when I was about entering the temple, I saw that the altar was open. And I could see this Muftis deity standing there. No pictures of a human form. Wow. Yes, from the outside. And that was my first time seeing something like that. So I was afraid. So when I checked, I noticed that the route. There's a road in front of the temple that leads outside there. So I said, let me just go and pass behind. Maybe there's a <laughs> link for me to go to. I don't see the deities. And truly, when I walk behind the building, I noticed there was a way there. So I passed through all that and we went to the office. So when I got there, I remember His Grace Ramanuja Prabhu, one of the devotees, was there. And I sat down, he asked me my mission. I told him, I want to come and join the church. And I was like, who preached to you? I said, nobody preached to me. Is it that you met the devotees out there and the director said, no. I said, how did you get to know? I said, no, I was just passing. I saw the signboard and I felt I should come and then just like that, just join. He was surprised because according to him, people come there because probably they met devotees out there. They pick books and they want to come and see or somebody directed him. For somebody coming from nowhere, you didn't, you were not, I mean, directed by a devotee, not that you met them out there. So he was surprised. So we have a discussion, and I said, I want to join. So it's okay. Take this book. I remember he gave me a small track of book. The, 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 the name is The Transcendental Teachings of Prahlad Maharaj. It's a very track book, and it's a very wonderful book. So I said, okay. I think it was on Tuesday. So I told him I would like to come to the temple. I asked him, when do you worship? Because I'm coming from the SDA background, I was thinking probably they worship on Saturday. They said, no, they worship on Sunday. So I said, okay, if that's, that's the case, I will come on Sunday. And it's okay, he will be going to Nigeria that weekend. So he wants to introduce me to one, the temple president, that um, this young guy wants to join us, so he will be coming on Sunday. Please take care of him when he's there. So he went to that office and he told the president, it's okay. I got home and I sat down, I read that book. I didn't stand up. I was sitting reading the book until when I finished the book. So I was like, wow, this book is nice. So the following day, I think on Wednesday, I went back to the temple and I met the man. The same man. The same man that received me when I went there the previous day. So I told him I'm done reading the book and I want to read more. So wow, just only one night I said yes, I love it. So he gave me another book. So this book happened to be the book I gave to my friend, Raja Vidya, the king of knowledge. So as soon as I 
I saw the book. I said, I have ever seen this book before. So he asked me and I explained how I opened my father's box and then I saw it all that. So I went there and within a short time, I finished reading the book also. Not one night, I think two days or so. So Sunday, I came to the temple. I remember I was wearing some brown trousers. I will never forget. This is many years ago. I had some, this giddy jack dress, like this kind of material, brown one, and I had some shoe. I remember. I used to have sporting waves. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I had a very nice sporting waves. I remember with this shirt, with a brown trousers with the shoe. So I, when I got there, I had to remove my shoe. We went to the temple room, and they said we have to sit down cross leg. It was not very co convenient. You know, you weren't used to. Yeah, you're not used to that. So sit down, sat down like that. After the whole class, then they said we have to do worship the blue coin shape, like that. What is it? They opened the altar, and I saw this personality standing there, beautiful, smiling. Not the image. The image. The image. Yes. So I was like, this is beautiful. So we started. And I remember a song we sang now. Anytime I hear that song, I remember the very first day I went to the temple. It goes like, Kiba Jayo, Jayo Gura Chande, Arati Kosova. Anytime I hear this stance, I remember the very first day I went to the temple. What so, does it mean? So Kiba Jayo, like, all of you gathered together as we are about worshiping the Supreme Lord. Wow. I never knew the meaning. So as the, the man started, Kiba Jayo, Jayo, Gura Chande, Arati Kosoba, Jana Vita Tavani, like that. So we started singing and they started moving. All of them, they're church people, like they have the same dressing with the dhoti. I got to know that's the name. Okay. Their dress were not sewn, like some bedsheet wrapped in the way, but it looks like trousers on top. So they, they got to a point, they started singing something. Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gura Bhakta Vrinda. That God, some years back, came in five personalities. One person came in five personalities. We were a different name by the same person. That's the song. So as soon as they got to that point, all of them started moving forward. Okay. So they move together and they come back. To and fro, like that. It was a beautiful thing. And I remember the Shivas, the president. He's a tall man. So he raised his hand like this. And the way he danced, that thing, it was so enticing. I was like, this thing is nice. Though. <laughs> so after the whole thing, they said we have to sit down and do love feast. So they lay mats and we all sat down. And then they started serving us food. And the Shivas himself, the president, he was there. Okay. And other people, they were old, they were not young people. They all came with pots. They started serving us. And I learned they are, not, they are vegetarians. They don't eat meat. But the food was just nice. I remember it was wache. Mm -hmm. It was wache. There was no meat in there. But I saw something that looks like cow meat. So the food was nice. So I remember asking somebody, say, ah, but you said you don't eat meat, but I'm yeah, seeing some. They said, no, it's not meat. This one is called chunks. Okay. It's soya chunks that you use from soya beans. I love the food. So those that were, so I remember asking them, can I have a pack? <laughs> so I remember one guy, he didn't call me. He's no more around here. I think he has traveled or something. He packed some for me. So when I was in the car, that time they were having a black car van that transported members from town. So after the whole program, we were about 15 of us that sat in the, in the van. So when we were going, a devotee, Wearing saffron, which was Brahmachari. His name is Jagavas. He's my very good friend now. He was in the car. Said, if you have any question, ask. So from mid there to circle, we were all asked a question because they knew that probably in the temple, you were feeling timid to ask questions. So they would put one devotee in that car to be answering questions. So they were asking so many questions. To be honest, I loved it. I was staying at that time, my brother, where I, I visited around Adabraka. Okay. Is that where I was staying? at the back of um, Otamis. So when I got down at Circle, I have to walk all the way to Adabraka. So I walked, and I loved the whole thing. So when I go home, I go and eat the food, the second one. <laughs> it was just nice. So I remember the following week, I came. So when we were going, so in the car, I said, 
But me, you know, the uh, vegetarian, me to me, you are difficult. Me, who say me vegetarian of the no. Like I don't know how to prepare the vegetarian dish. So there's this woman, Mother Jarati. She is there now. So she said, "Oh, it's e easy to become a vegetarian. Don't you know how to prepare beans?" I said, "Yeah, I can prepare beans." She said, "Yeah, prepare beans. Put tomatoes and pepper and whatever spice you have. Put it in there. Now you can cook rice. So you eat. You are vegetarian." Okay. So, yes, yeah, he just told me this. So I said, oh, yeah, simple. So the following day, that was Monday, I went to the town, I went to go and buy some small stove. I think that stove, I still have it now. Wow. I bought some small stove, a small aluminum cooking pot. I think I bought three of them. So I started. You need a picture of those? Yes. <laughs> I don't know whether I will have it. I think she should have it because I remember something happened. I, I went to Nigeria. When I was going to Nigeria, I carried them. When I returned from Nigeria, I brought the same thing. But now I don't know where probably it might be somewhere. I can't find it. So I started preparing my beans. So when I prepared the beans and I bought the plain rice, I mix it and eat. In the morning, I go and buy porridge, cocoa, and eat. In the afternoon, I remember, so Muma was selling yam. So in the afternoon, I go and buy yam, and I use some of my beans to, to eat it. Okay. In the evening, I'm able to prepare the rice. I'll go and buy rice, take the salad, then I come and add the beans. That's what I was doing for a long time. Beans, rice, beans, rice. Like I was eating for a long time and I was not, never fed up with it. Until when I later I started knowing, I got this book called The Higher Taste. The Higher Taste gives you all the skills how to prepare for different kinds of preparations. So I got that book. I started preparing normal stew with cabbage and all that in there to make me feel happy. How to prepare soup and all that. So I was very consistent in the temple and very serious. So See, this period, if I tell you my life at that time, before then, I was a Christian, but we had so many questions. What actually even gave me that conviction that this place would be good for you is that there were many questions that I used to have as a Christian. When you ask, probably you'll be answered, but the answer is not satisfactory. But just by reading the first book, most of the answers were, questions were answered. Okay. And many other things that probably was difficult for me to comprehend. Now it's so much easy. So I thought this is right. So I was very serious. I remember that time, those of you that remember, they were, TV3, they were showing uh, Sunset Beach. That time, there was a day series, Sunset Beach. It was so popular. I don't know now of any series that very popular. Now that time, every night from 7 to I think 8, everybody would go and watch Sunset Beach. It's, it's ringing in my ear. <laughs> Trust me, it was very famous and popular at that time. So I was watching it. It's something I would never miss for anything. But when I started reading the books, I lost interest in them. Now I stopped watching television. Why? Like, my time was so occupied. Like, every now and then, I want to see. I want to read more. I want to see what is in the book. What is ahead? You know, that kind of thing. So I was not having time for the TV anymore. So I stopped watching television. Now, even the normal friends that I used to have before, we used to talk, and no friend. Okay. Uh, got, I remember this very well that I had a bead, the rosary that we used for our prayers, that in the afternoon, I would get be reciting the prayer all the time. In the evening, before I sleep, I'll go and read and read and read, and then i recite more before I sleep. Like, I was so much into this thing. See, it's like somebody was mad. Not mad in the form of dressing, but I was so focused on this. So I think the temple noticed this. The temple noticed. So one day I was there when the president, the Shivas, now he's a Maharaj, now he's a guru now. He said, he mentioned my local name. He said, I see you to be very committed and very dedicated. And I have seen you talking to people two, three times. You are a good preacher. I never knew I could preach. He said, you will be a good preacher. So we want one devotee, he mentioned the name, he's in the US now. Okay. We want him to train you to become a preacher in the future. So I said, okay. So every Sunday when I remember, every Sunday when I'm going to the temple, I'll go to the Saturday first. At the time, I'll go and wash his things. I'll go and wash his dresses. I will save him. Then I'll be asking questions in the course of all this service. Like that, like that. So he used to go to Radio Good to go and have programs. So you tell me I'm going to Radio, so you should tune and listen to me, how I answer the questions and whatnot. So I was serious, I was very committed. No, that I was just so much committed because the thing was nice. 
You read the books and all your questions are answered. So it got to a point, my brother was in Nigeria then. So he told me he wanted to go to Spain. And I was having a shop. So I should come and take care of the shop for him to go. So I remember going to the temple, informing the temple that, okay, I want to go to Nigeria because my brother is there. And is there any temple in Nigeria? So yeah, there's a temple there. Seven and eight bus stop. Ajao Estate. So I took the address. I think I went on, was on Wednesday, we went to the Nigeria. So when I got there, on Friday, I wanted to look for the temple. So I went throughout, and yes, Nigeria is a terrible place. The way they drive, everything was so bad. Their vehicles will not even stop for you to get down. Mm -hmm. They won't stop for you to enter. You have to jump <laughs> out. <laughs> this thing I'm talking about now is something I remember very well. So I sat in the car for my gege. They said the car is going to Osodi. Okay. But on the way, they have about 20 bus stops in the way. And all the bus stops, the car will not stop. The person had to jump out. Hey. I'm t it's serious. <laughs> so I was like, hey. So if I get to my bus stop and I have to jump out, like, how am I going to jump out this way? So when we were going, I kept on asking, where's the Osodi? Where's the Osodi? So he got to a point, one guy said, the Osodi is after three, after three, three bus stops of this bus stop. So that here, there was some car parked in front of our car. So the car stopped. So I got down. <laughs> because I don't know, maybe no, when I get trouble. to the Osodi bus stop and this guy don't stop, how am I going to get down? Okay. And Nigeria, everything seems completely different as compared to Ghana. Every, it's like a different hell. Yeah, survival mode. Nigeria is a different <laughs> place. So I was just timid. So this bus stop, I got down. I have to walk like from here to Achimota before I go to the Osodi. Wow. It was a long distance. So when I got to Osodi, they were calling. So I said, I'm going to seven and eight bus stop. That's where the temple is. So yes, so here I sat down. The seven and eight bus stop was the last bus stop. So from there, they have to turn. So that one, they cast up. Okay. I got that. I remember I crossed the road. So there was a cutter man there. They told me when you get there. That time, there was no mobile phone for you to be calling. So you have to just be following the direction that was given to me from Ghana. So I remember I saw this Okada rider. That was my first time sitting on a motorbike. So I asked him, I'm going to the Arigata Temple. He said, it's 20 Naira. It's okay. For me, I thought it was the Naira was okay. That's okay. I saw the on the motorbike. Now, the guy just went at the back of the house. Yeah. <laughs> I said, so this guy, if I'm going here, you could have told me it's just this house. <laughs> just a walking distance. It's, just, it's like just back of my house here. <laughs> He just passed like this and say, Oh, yeah, give me my 20 naira. That's okay. So I just paid him. So he just cheated me because he knew I didn't know the place. I went there. The temple is a big story building, like about four story building. Nice place. So I told him I'm from Ghana and I mentioned devotee's name and this is my name. So I just came newly and I want to start worshiping with them. They were very happy. So I started going there. There are many things I learned in devotions. I learned from Nigeria. Okay. They're having a program every Saturday. They used to go for something called Bhakti Vrisha, where new members meet, and then you go and learn many new things. And every Tuesday was cooking lesson day. So the Tuesday, there was an Indian who would teach us how to prepare vegetarian preparation. The pie, pie the uh, cake, everything. Wow. So every Tuesday, I'll go and learn how to prepare. So I was good when it comes to cooking. Then on Saturday, we go for Bhagavad Gita class to go and learn. And then Sunday, I'll go to temple. So all these three days, I was participating. I was very serious like that. So after some time, I thought Nigeria was not the place that I could stay for long. Why, why do you say There that? were many terrible things. I remember once I was going somewhere, I sat in the car and I paid. I remember I paid 500 Naira. So I kept on asking the mate, please, my change. He said, wait, I'll give you change. After some time, my change, like that. So I asked him like three, four times. The mate said, I won't give the change. Come and beat me. Just like that. Just like that. So in the castle, so I kept quiet. And the conductors, they are very strong. Oh. You see their faces now. They fight all the time. So you see bruises all the time. And you see they'll be doing this. Even when they are walking in there, they are <laughs> boxing. They are that kind of terrible people. We call them agueros. Okay. So I said, okay. I didn't, keep, I didn't say anything. So there's one man who was sitting down there. I said, he saw me to be a gentle guy who was not ready for this nonsense. So he said, how much is he supposed to give you? So I mentioned. So he gave me his own money. And tell the I oh, bring change, bring change. Bring the change to me. So the guy saw that this guy was ready to fight with him. So now he gave him the change. <laughs> and many other things. Every gate, every road in Nigeria has a, a gate. Okay. By 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., they lock it. Wow. I'm telling you this. Is it an estate or just... Not uh, estate. Everywhere in Nigeria, 
in Lagos, I don't know of other states, but Lagos, like see the road from here to Ajua Safo side, this side, okay. there, there will be a gate there. So in the night, they will lock here and they will lock here. For security reasons. For security, what? because armed robbers are everywhere. At that time, Nigeria, Lagos was terrible. So looking at the whole thing, I thought, no. I remember sometime the Yorubas and the house, they had an issue. Within three days, we couldn't go out. And when they are allowed to go out now, the whole road was full of cops. Wow. They have killed people. So Nigeria, I thought, Nigeria was not very good for me. So I decided to come back to Ghana. So when I came back to Ghana, I went straight to my town, Domesia. So I stayed there for some time. And I noticed my people were looking at me in a very weird way. Before we come to your people, mm -hmm. didn't anybody discourage you? Oh, there was a lot of discouragement. A lot. I remember in Adabraka, there was um, a fellowship that we were all participating in. There's one, the, rep, the guy, Pastor Abankwa and Elder John and Elder Abankwa. They're from one of these charismatic churches. So every, was it Tuesday? I've forgotten the day. They used to come there for us to have discussion. So after some time, I think some of the boys told this pastors that this man is going to some Indian church. So one day after the evening session, he called me and he said he had um, attending some Indian church. He was a member before. I was like, wow. But he got to a point, he noticed that they were drinking human blood, they were eating human flesh. That's why he stopped. Okay. So I was afraid. I said, really? I said, yes. They were drinking human blood, they were eating flesh, and he saw that eating human flesh and human blood, it was too bad, so he stopped. Me, I have been a controversial person all my life. So I said, okay, Pastor John. I think we used to call them Elder John. Okay. You saw that what they were doing was bad and you stopped. Truly, me, I'm a Christian from childhood. My birth, I've been Christian all this way. If I discover that they drink blood and eat human flesh, I will stop. You saw it, you stopped. So if I see it, I'm going to stop. But so far, I have not seen anything like they even killing animals. Mm -hmm. So the man noticed that I was not ready to you know, bow to his... <laughs> whatever advice wanted to give me. So I was just going, and they were doing their uh, fellowship. So I got to a point, I stopped. So I noticed all the things they were talking about, the Bible and all that. It was no challenge to me. I stopped. Then did he truly join the Irishian movement? So after some time, when now I noticed, I became very serious, and almost all the books, I have gone through them. And the books will tell you, don't harm anything. Whatever you do to other beings, not only human beings, will come back to you. And for that past purpose, they don't even kill anybody. They're all vegetarians. So now I was very convinced that, yes, now Hare Krishna, they don't eat meat. That now, I, I, even there's any secret behind that, I don't know. Now I'm very much aware that they are vegetarians. They don't eat meat. So I went there. One day when they were having their lessons in the evening. So after, I sat down and said, hey, brother, they mentioned my name. So a long time now you come and say, yes, today I want to watch with you. So normally after the whole thing, they will say, if you have any question, ask. So I asked them. Elder John, do you remember some months ago you told me you have ever been there had a Christian person before and they used to eat meat and drink human blood? Now I've read all their books and they are vegetarians. They don't even kill mosquitoes. So he started smiling, saying, yes, uh, you know, God loves you so much and we felt that Satan is taking you away. So we wanted to, you know, disc discourage you from going to that church. So I've never attended before and I just want to say something to discourage you. Wow. He said this. So I said, Elder, if you were able to lie, this kind of big lie like this, so it means that all that you have been telling us about God could be lies. I don't think I will join this again. I left. And that was the end of that fellowship. It never came again. Wow. So all the boys saw that, yes, what I said was true. Because if a whole pastor or elder, you could just give this big lie to the point that people used to drink blood, which is even criminal. That if the government finds out that some people are drinking blood, they could even go to jail. Yes. So for you to speak that kind of big lie, it means that there's nothing you can say. So and truly, that was the end of the fellowship. That's when the boys started listening to me. Because they noticed that if because of me, these people are not coming again, it means that whatever I said was something profound. So they started following me, and I started talking to them about this. I remember some people from my village, Dumasuya, that were living around that area, followed me. They used to follow me to the temple. Time when I'm going on Sunday, they follow me, but none of them took it serious. Okay. But me, I was very serious with it. So when I went to my 
Dumasuya from Nigeria. From Nigeria, Nigeria. I came to Accra two days. When I came, I was in the hotel. So I decided to, I came with all my things. Okay. Because I knew I was not going back to Nigeria again. So I went to Dumasuya. When I went to Dumasuya, my people were looking at me in a very weird way. So like, this guy from Dimo or something like that. My mom would not talk to me. My sister, like, nobody would talk to me. So what has happened? But I was very serious. I wake up very early in the morning. 3 a.m. I'm up. Take my shower, I take my beat, and I'll be going around the house. I'll be chanting. I'll be chanting the prayers. And I remember my mom will be preparing the soup. You know, she used to say kokunte, bengu, and those things early in the morning. So she wakes up very to start doing the preparation. She won't talk to me. I'll be like that, walking around the house. In the morning, I'll bring my stove, the same stove. I'll bring it with my aluminum cooking pot. I'll prepare my own food. I'll do right now. I can prepare nice too because I've gone through how to prepare vegetarian food, prepare nice food. And the people that knew me before, that were not afraid of, some were afraid, they, kind of, they couldn't come to me. But those who know I'm afraid, they will come and we sit down and we eat together. So when I prepare rice in the morning, they still is enough. So I leave some in the evening. I can prepare maybe yam or something with the same stew. Okay. So after about two weeks or so, early in the morning, when I was when I finished reciting my prayer, my mom called me and said, I know you. You've changed. So if it's because of this check that you have changed, then the check is good. You can go. You know the relationship between you and your mom. Yeah. When she wasn't speaking with you, how... It you was speak? something. Because when I was in Accra, my mom told me, I got a message that my mom said, she learned I'm going to some Indian church. So if I don't stop, when she dies, I shouldn't even come to the funeral. Wow. Yeah. So within this period, my mom would not talk to me. I was not eating their food, but we were all living in the same house. So when she said this, that this church is good for you because you have changed so much. You've changed so much. So if your change is due to the church, then the church is good for you to go. I was so pleased because I was not feeling comfortable. So my mother was not in agreement. So this time around, I was so happy. So I live a while. There's a temple in Sunyani. So every Sunday, I'll go. And even at times, ordinary days, I'll go and stay there a whole day, then come back in the evening. So it got to a point, my senior sisters, and like, they were not happy with me, kind of. So the way they were doing things, when they are even talking, I'm coming, they will keep quiet. See that kind of thing. It's like they are gossiping about you and saying things. Yeah. So I thought, uh, it wouldn't be good for me to stay in this family house. I'm a young boy. Don't forget, I'm a young guy at that time. Just completed this. So, so, so I think I have to leave. So I went to Sunyani Temple. I told the president that I think I have to leave here. He was very disturbed because I was supporting him. I go there. We do the cleaning of the compound and all that. And... On Sunday, I'll go to the kitchen to go and prepare the food for the congregation to come and eat. So I told him I have to leave because I don't feel comfortable because my people there, they are Christians, and they don't seem to understand what I'm doing. They feel probably I'm doing something negative, something evil. I don't feel comfortable, so I just want to leave. And I remember my uncle, who were very good. That time, every evening, even though I was not eating their food, I had to go and pound the food for him. During the days, he was a farmer. I have to follow them to farm. At the time, you have to go and pluck tomatoes. I was doing everything like a mini servant to him. So one day, I went to the temple during Jamastami. Normally, Jamastami is a festival. We, did, we do it around 12 a.m. So I went there in the evening, and I told them that I'll be coming the following day because uh, we were feeling very late in the night, and I don't think it would be prudent for me to come back that night. So I'll come the following day. When I was coming from Nigeria, I had this doorbell. It's like telephone. Okay. So when you ring the bell, you pick the telephone from the room, the handset from the room, then you can be able to hear the person at the gate. So I had one from Nigeria. So in the morning, I mean, when we finished the Jamasami celebration around 12 midnight, there was a devotee who drives. He was going to Siatre. That means that he will pass through Dumasia before in Siatre. So I told him, please take me so that I can alight at Dumasia. So he did that. So around 2 a.m., when everybody's sleeping in the house, that's the time I came. So they didn't know that I was there in the night. So in the morning around 5 to 6, my uncle came to the house. And he was talking to my sisters. And they were saying a lot of bad things about me. Terrible things. So I was hearing my name. Just what is happening? So I took the handset from the room. And because of the, that thing out there, I was hearing all that they were saying. For about 13 minutes, they were saying many horrible things about me. So... When they finished, in the morning when I wake up after brushing my teeth, I went to my uncle. But I said, ah, you said you were going for a program and you come back this morning. I said, no, no, no. I came around 2 a.m. When I came, I was reading through a whole night. I didn't sleep. 
So I was awake. I wanted him to know that I heard whatever they said. I was awake all night. He said, really? I said, yes. He said, okay. So after some time, he told me, hey, Brian, uh, two weeks from today, remind me that I said I want to tell you something. I said, okay. So it's only the two weeks. I asked my father, you wanted to tell me something? So wait, another two weeks. Okay. Remind me. So it was like that for about two months. He was not telling me. So when finally I decided to move out of Dumasuya to come to Accra, my uncle's best friend, Brian Boa, these people, they are part of the Mkoso fan club now. Wow. They are the executives. So they are old people now. That time my uncle was just a young man. He was married. I think he was having only one son at that time. Now he's having three or four now. So I told my uncle's best friend, Brian Boa, I said, Papa, see, my uncle do A, B, C, D. And I know he's killing him. Because he's thinking that maybe I didn't hear. Or maybe I heard. <laughs> so he's really, really dying in silence. Because I told him I was there throughout the whole night. I didn't sleep. So it means I heard him. But if I heard him, why is that I have not asked him? And I have not changed. The same thing I used to do for him, pounding his food, going to farm with him, fetching water for him. I'm doing the same thing. That thing is very dangerous. So that's me. And after that, I do things. I have not changed. The same thing I do. Wow. So I, you think I don't know, I know. But uh, see, I won't allow the way you do things to change me. No. I'm the same right now. now. So my uncle... He's saying in ahead. Oh, I didn't hear. It's killing him. So I am leaving today. Wait, tomorrow tell him I said I heard everything. But he's my uncle, and I don't think I'm, I'm offended. I'm not offended. So you should know that I'm not keeping it in my heart. If not, it's troubling him. So I left. And then later, after some time, when I went back to Dumasia, my uncle said, hey, that check is good for you. <laughs> I was dying. Even just recently, mm -hmm. recently when I went to Dumasia, he told the, this story to the people that he was dying like anything. <laughs> so... I went for a long time, and now I decided to go and stay in the temple. Okay. That was my plan. Okay. So when I got there, I told one of the devotees that I need to rent a place. So they got a single room for me. I paid for it. That's why I was staying. So that I have full time to go to the temple morning, afternoon, evening. So one day I was there when they said they are going out for preaching and they want me to go. I said, me? I was just a mere member. I said, no. We see you to be a serious person and you have a very great future. I remember one devotee, his name is Satyaki, he's there, told me, so you will be a great person in the future. So we want today to be the beginning of that greatness. I was happy. So he removed his own dress, the one he was wearing at that time. He went to the room, he removed the dress top and down. I said, wear this. And he was a powerful preacher at that time. Mm -hmm. Anytime Ghana, they will go anywhere for preaching, he's the one that speaks. So he removed the dress, I said, go and wear this. Does the dress signify anything? I don't know. I don't know exactly, but I think that there was a lot of attractive energy inside the dress. So I went there. The dotty, I don't know how to even tie. So one devotee followed me to the room, and they have to help me to do the tie and the wear the top. When I came out, everybody said, wow. Like that. I remember this very well. So we went out. We went to Kuforidia. So normally, when the preacher finished speaking, they give us books to approach people, those that need a book. And then the books were not selling. We we're not selling them for donations. So you take book, you give donations. There were senior people among them. I was just a new person, somebody who doesn't know much. So we went there. We went to about three places that day to do the preaching. And when we came back, I was first. Among all about 15, 20 people, I distributed more books than anybody. And the donation I received was bigger than anyone's. It was like, so in the morning, Mangarati, they will open the altar after everything. They will announce the result to the deities. That yesterday, Harry Nam, this is the collection. They will mention the devotee's name, distributed this book. And received this donation. Like that's when it got to my name, Bacta Charles. That was my name, Bacta Charles. Distributed days and days. Haribo, everybody in the temple room, because I was just a new person that joined their team and like, I've surpassed everybody. So, like that, they started adding me anytime they are going out, said, No, you should join us. Okay. So, now not only daily basis, but when they are traveling, I time the whole month, they are out there preaching, I had to join them. And all this while I was not preaching, I was just distributing. So I remember one day we went to Western Region Session. So before we, I didn't know that they have discussed in the car that today, this spot, we will allow about a chance to preach. I didn't know. And normally when we are doing our kit and that, I dance. I dance strong, like serious dancing. And now after dancing, you'll be tired, you need to catch up with your breath and all that. So just after the dancing, they said, you should go and preach. I was so tired, breathing heavily. <sighs> so I threw the microphone. 
And anytime our main preacher was speaking, preaching, I would sit close by where he's standing. You see, this is like, we normally go with the car. Okay. So we park the car, we put the books on the screen of the car, and we connect the microphone from the car. So the microphone straight from the car. So I would sit in front of the car. Okay. And I would be listening to whatever he's saying. All throughout about two or three months. So when they gave me the microphone that I should speak, I have never, you know, spoken in front of a crowd. There were a lot of people there. So I said, what do I do? I would just repeat all the things he has been saying. <laughs> and, you know, I, when I was in school, I had a guy named. They called me Babachas. I can just remember a whole book in my mind. Mm -hmm. When we were in school, we were from village. So the school, I mean, they didn't respect us. We are from Dumasia is a village. There were people from St. Mary's and all the big schools. And we were going to do science. We are from village. So that way they were making fun of us. <laughs> that kind of thing. So I remember the physics master came. He taught us about what physics stands for. The biology, chemistry, biology came, chemistry came. So I think they're called science master. He came after about a week. Then he said, so far, you are a new student here. Can anybody tell me what is science? So all these people from the BB school that they have big name, they are making fun of us. They will stand up and say, okay, science is A, B, C, D. They will say, this one is science A, B, C, D, like that. So I was afraid. And we were four from our village. We were all doing science, myself, George Chileme, Mark Chileme, and uh, Asidu. We are four people that were all doing science. So they will say, say, hey, these people, all these big people, children, are saying something. You, you village man like that, you want to come and say something? <laughs> I said, no, see. So I said, I raised my hand. They asked me, what is science? So when I stood up, 10, 15 minutes, I was standing there, I was just talking about science. And not anything I have said to you, I was just repeating verbatim all the things that you have told us. <laughs> all the chemistry, I've memorized it. All the fixes, memorize it. The biology, memorize it. So wow. I would just say, science says this. The biology side, then I will repeat all the things we have said in the biology, almost like two pages. I'll come to the fixes. I'll say it. I'll come to the chemistry. Come and see the room. <laughs> hey. hey! So the teacher said, who is school from you? I said, from, from Dumas. Yeah. I said, I can't believe this. So they gave me guy name, Babachas. <laughs> because I memorized all the things we have said for about two weeks mm -hmm. in my mind. So the whole thing is, my life has been like this. So when he was speaking, I memorized all the things. From the beginning, say, he speaking like about one hour. I have memorized all the things I've been saying. Verbatim, exactly. At what point did you say this? You read this story, that story. So when I took the microphone, I was, and I was saying the whole thing. I said everything from the beginning to the end. So when I entered the car, they said, you are amazing. <laughs> How is it possible you can just memorize everything Satyaki Prabhu has been saying? I said, but we have been listening to him. So that's okay. Now you'll be part of our preaching. So in a time when Satyaki speaks, then they will give him a microphone. When they are distributing the books, then I will also speak. So he got to a point, Satyaki, one day, I think he didn't join us. So when they said, Satyaki is not going, he's the main preacher. So now you have to be the main preacher. That's okay. And you know, I used to be nice. I dress, I all my things, probably I put my nice tail. Like, my hair here was very long. My sika was long. So I remember when we finished one sport, we went to Kumasi. Kumasi Adum. So during our bajans, our ketans, a huge crowd. Hey, how am I going to speak in front of these people? Now I want to be the main speaker. So I took the microphone. Oh, Brad. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me that day. When I finished that day, all our books, we stored every single book that day. One day. Wow. We were going for two weeks. So you plan on distributing for two weeks, but you used one day. One day, the whole books will be... I do I remember this. I mean, you small man. That time, you know, because even now, see my side. And that time, I was just a short guy, short guy, slim. I'm something now, I'm even a little bit, you know, I put on weight. I was just some tiny guy. When I finished speaking, everybody was like, what? The whole books was finished. I know that like, we have some oils and perfumes and different mystical things. We've sold so much. So now they say, okay, now you have taken the position as the main preacher, so you will <laughs> preach all the time. But all this while, I've never been to India before. Okay, okay so um, all this while, uh, I have been a celibate. 
Because when they join the movement, they have a group called the Brahmacharis. People who don't engage in sex life, they are fully Brahmacharis, celibate students. And then we have the Grihasta. Grihasta are the people that are married. And then we have the Vanaprasta, people that have gone through marriage, but at their old age, they feel they don't want to get involved with marriage. They want to focus and then do preaching. Okay. Then we have the Sanyasi. So we have four groupings in Krishna consciousness. So later, I noticed that, okay, as a beginner, you have to be a Brahmachari, staying out of sex, focus more on the study so that you can become more powerful. So all this while I was a celibate. So after some time, they noticed that I was a very good preacher, that I'm able to talk to people, speak the philosophy, and people understand easily. So the leadership felt, this boy is doing so well. We have to send it to India. So that at least you go to where this all stuff is coming from. And from India, he will be impacted. He will be given shakti, some energy, some spiritual powers, so that he can do this work of preaching and preaching and preaching. So when I was told that I have to make preparation to go to India so that I can go, at that time we have to go during Gora Punima. Gora Punima is the most powerful festival of Krishna consciousness. And if you go to Mayapur, every spiritual person throughout the whole world that is devotee tries to come to Mayapur during the Gora Punima time. Mm -hmm. So I was told you have to go to India to prepare yourself so that you can come back and do the preaching and do all the things that you want to do. There are many things you can do now. You must first take initiation. You must be ordained. You must have some kind of ability before you can start this. So from there, I have to make arrangement to go to India to start my real spiritual journey. So you must have some kind of ability before you start your India. That is the part. If not, you can't. <laughs> so we'll be discussing that in our next part. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much.